Welcome to the Fragments of Eternity, which is Starfinder. I am Ryan, the GM. It is session 40. Uh, it's the 27th of January, 2020, and here are the players. Hello. I am Nico. I'm Queen Zora, the mess captain, I think. Hello. I am Alex, and I play Nix5, the android mechanic slash captain. Supper. Hello, you are the audience, and I am Colin. And uh, Ooh, as night Colin, off, <laughs> I will be. Uh, I will be playing Michael Quint, who is, uh, you know, the thing, the bet. You know the bet that I do. That the Adams family. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Callum. Hi, Callum. Hi, and I'm. An, I'm I'll, be, I'll be playing. I'll be playing Zig. <laughs> Mystical space rat. And I think you'll find I'm the captain now. I don't know why it amuses me a great deal to just reply to Callum when he says hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Callum, and I'm Hi, an Callum. alcoholic. Um, <laughs> I Don't mean, you know you've got your daddy's eyes? Your daddy was. You should uh, probably give them back. What, those. Like, what was that from? Was it like Idle World or something? Fucking. Somebody I know used to have it in like their MySpace or something. Who knows such things from the past? Oh no, my phone yeah. fell. Where did it fall? Down, <laughs> usually. <laughs> in this case, yes. Imagine not, though. And then you have to question what way up you are and also. Imagine it. You're in space. Uh, Objects in space. Good episode. One of my favourites, in fact. Moving thoroughly on. What do you remember from last time? We got together and played Starfinder. The yeah, psychic yes. meat was fun. We we started with the intro. Psychic uh, meat. Uh, psychic meat, yes. We're, we seem to be making friends with the drag queen. I'm not sure how Callum feels about this. We killed some innocent beasts. We did. For their psychic <laughs> stereoscopic. For no real particular reason. Rex. <laughs> I went. Um, <laughs> Was it I just like the intro to like Zora's version of a uh, Rocky Horror? Like stereoscopic Tyrannosaurus Rex, stereoscopic Tyrannosaurus. Nico Rennie was ill the day the Earth stood still. But he uh, told us where we stand. Anyway, back in the review of last time, Flash Gordon was the review. Five stars, well done. Uh, I played a cooking mini game, and it was good. Claude Rains was the invisible man. Um, we sent Zig out to hunt. That's true. Hunt trees. trees. <laughs> <laughs> <Fortage>. <laughs> because I am the tree hunter. <laughs> to be honest, there's probably something called that, like on Travel Channel, or, or probably the History Channel, actually, considering the quality so of their content right. these days. Alien tree, tree hunters. hunters. <laughs> oh, <you're> fucking... <laughs> right, so we're going to do a special <laughs> called Alien I, Tree I, Hunters. I've said this before, <laughs> but if I had, like, you know, a a gun in a time machine. I wouldn't go back for Baby Hitler. I'd go back for Egg from Danikin because he ruined pop culture forever, basically. Well, you had anyway, hot there you go. Here. If you don't know who Egg from Danikin is, <laughs> friends at home, Google him and uh, <coughs> and then despair <laughs> at the state All of. Oh, and your friends are here. Appearance. We're playing their game with you. There are no friends at home. Anymore. This is it. Uh, no. <laughs> well, is... I guess. I guess we're. I guess we're all at home. This is like the bet <laughs> oh. in. The M. Night Shyamalan movie where the boy realises that things aren't what they seem. All oh, signs. of the movies, then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, right, so this was a fun session. What are we calling it? Uh, signs. Yeah. <laughs> signs. Yep. Perfect. Stereoscopic, supersonic, tyranna. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Phonic. <laughs> tyranna Phonic sounds like it was an early 90s album. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Just, I'll don't... write it. The word phonic is definitely the 90s. Um, oh. Ridiculous. Yeah, very, very much so. Uh -huh. um, oh, man. Yeah, and it ended, of course, with the psychic meat. Yes, the 90s, yes. that is. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, psychic. the 90s did end the psychic meat. So that'll be um, the last song on the album. Tyrannophonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. To be fair, we do have names for at least 40... Yeah, for at least 40 tracks, if you need them. We've got Graduation Day. I think that's the wrong door. The Goo Crew. Well, that was helpful. 
it's just a jump to the left. Maybe that's a bit plagiarism. Pressure, overused title. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, but anyway, speaking mm. of this game, I guess that's just uh, a title, there, isn't it? Tyrannophonic. Um, yeah, I think we'll talk about goals, shall we? That's well, a place to start. In many ways, yes. Good. So, Zora. And in. Um, let me actually remember to bring up the Starfinder game. Starfinder game manager. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Um, get, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mine's, mine seems fine so far. So, um, yeah, cool. Half completed well, tell, tell the audience at home what your goal is. Get back to the final hour and debrief the crew. Nice. Oh, that was good. Yeah, I like it. I like that. Next, you've got uh, oh, oh, a new I'm goal, I see. Flushed. Yeah, I have an achievable goal. Now, can you do this in as impressive and unexpected a way as uh, <laughs> Zora? Uh, see, no matter what you do, we expect Kill the man. queen. I'll try my best. Oh, man. Oh, I'm getting chills. <laughs> <laughs> it seems a bad time. She's having a rough time with her grandkids, not wanting to come around and things, so... Yeah, right. And it's like politically, it's in a bad place. Obviously, tunnels, yeah. all tunnels are having new cameras installed. Like, yep. it's yes, very it's political and <laughs> charged, you could say. Um, subways are a write off. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, but yeah. I think we'll make it work. Like, travel by blimp seems to be the safest option currently. <laughs> uh. But in other news, next five. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think it was uh, Dignified Burial SK is probably still on the cards Yeah. in the absence of any other plan mm -hmm. yeah I think that's valid um, I don't know what that word was but it'll do I think it was valuable and fallible at the same time Dignified yeah. Burial of SK Furler Ugh 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 can Zora stop arousing Zig, please? Just for about five minutes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just till we get through the goals. <laughs> and there, uh, like a wind. Well, uh, as as stands, and I think I discussed this previously, it, it does seem like this is maybe more medium term now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or mid term, or whatever. Which is an upgrade for long term. Unlong. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know if it's worth, because I don't I don't know that there's a particularly... So, in the situation we're currently in, I don't know that there's a goal that's particularly immediate uh, as pertains to, you know, the drug and all that, other than, you know, say, what the fuck was that? That's not really a goal. To me, that is not sufficient to be a goal. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I would say I, I don't have anything shorter term that comes to mind terribly. That's uh, fine. So I, I, think I think it's still that, because it is find means to kill Hamani. It isn't yeah. just kill him. But yeah, because that's longer term. Yeah, and it could be multiple ways, right? Because it doesn't necessarily mean you need to actually kill him. It's just that find something you w are willing to risk your own life on killing him, right? Realistically, that's the completion term of that goal, is something you would comfortably attempt to use to kill him. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I still like that goal. I think it's worth pursuing. I'm actually kind of excited to see where we end up with it, um, which is the fine means to kill Hamani. Um, but can you give us it in a like or quint way? Do you want to tell the audience what it is in a like or quint way? Um, no. That's a very like or quint way. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it, it is what it was before. So I, 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 I yeah, fair enough. It's um, I, I don't know. I don't like reading lines in character that aren't in character. Okay, then just reboard it in character. We're filling because Nico's away for 10 minutes. Yeah, we, we are filling, <laughs> but that's okay. We can fill with, you know, speaking about things. Um, I, 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 I We're mean, also I, buying Callum time to think of goals as well. Fuck's sake. Oh, don't think. Just do. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, th I think, right, so obviously we're, we're, our current situation is not one where we can immediately act in this particular... Unless, of course, something she knows can maybe be uh, applied to the situation, but I think realistically this is a goal for after we've sort of 
extricated ourselves from the current. Not entirely, you know, unpleasant situation, but it did take a bit of a weird turn at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I think something is uh, obviously going to have to be addressed once we begin in earnest. Yeah, and it doesn't, obviously, in typical style, it's weird. Um, the end, really. So, good. Let's see what we can manage out of that. Uh, Zig, what were your goals? Hi. Hi. So what I've done here, as you can see, you've used purple. I've created. I've, I've used purple. Um, I have created mini goals for the goal. Sub goals. Sub goals. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> because I feel his the 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 whole confront captain nonsense. Is really a get back to the ship thingy after you get back to the ship sort of thing. So it's more of a long, mid to long term right. goal thing. Yes. So I was trying to think. Right. How do I com compartment? Next, are you doing an update? Is that where that beeping is? Is someone on fire? Yeah. Yes, it's me. It's me. Go fix it. Don't be. Play Malka. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Damn you, Emily! Fuck sake! Oh. <laughs> Damn you! She's in our heads. She's in our heads. <laughs> I mean, so given me. the ending of so. the uh, last session, right? That's it. Psyche. Mm. <laughs> this is just because I forgot her name. It's her it? return. Yeah. <laughs> ah! uh, oh no! Oh dear. But yeah, so carry on. Take it. Um, I was saying, yeah. So I thought I would try and come up with steps to achieving that, as opposed to just. Achieving it. Right, okay. I see. That, that's fine, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm okay with that, I don't mind that at all. I mean, I do feel like keeping the crew alive and arrive safely to the final hour is an interesting step, and if that had been a goal on its own, I would have said it was a bad goal. Uh huh. Do you know why? Even though this is just an exercise in talking about goals for a bit. Well, because um, it's not really something I've physically done. So the way it works is, depends if you consider yourself in immediate danger out uh -huh. with the final hour, right? So there's a qualifier. You not being in the final hour, does that mean you're in immediate danger? Yes or no, right? And then you've got keep the crew alive and arrive safely back at the final hour. So that gives you a a finality to it. It will be achieved if you get everybody safe to the final lower. The keep mm -hmm. people alive part is obviously debatable um, depending on what you consider crew and it would involve active participation in that act. So if you never came under fire, the goal wasn't valid. Does that make yes, sense? That, yes, I, um, I guess. So if a goal is listed, such as the current party goal, and nothing is pursuant to that, but it would get completed as an auto-resolve, right? For example, if somebody just appears from space, hands like oh, the dragon-killing gun, he doesn't get the XP for find means to kill Hamani, because he, oh, ne yes, yes, I'm he never actively pursued anything. It was just me solving the problem for him. Um, does that mm. make sense? So, whereas, prove to Zig that he is not useless and the crew need him. Like, so are you going to just tell me when you feel like you're not useless? Does he see what I mean by the wording of that part? Oh, yes. I'm sure. Um, is it proof to Zora? You meant, or do you mean proof to Zig? Like, is Zig meaning, like, he needs to feel like he's useful? Because both are interesting, right? Yes. Um, I felt like it was... Um, when I wrote it, I felt Zig kind of needs that sort of, like, actually here... You, you you are kind of needed by the way and I feel like he needs to do something to... Yeah, like self-validation in a way, that, right? Like yeah. He needs to have done something that... So that's that's good because it means that you could then actually pursue an act an act or an, an encounter or you know a side quest unto itself where you uh -huh. actively try and seek out that affirmation that you are yes. valid in some way. Um 
Yeah, no, I think it's it's interesting to see like breaking the goals down a bit. It is interesting um, for how people want to try and achieve them. Obviously, I'm kind of just assuming you guys do that part in your heads and obviously try and work towards it in some way, but goals don't auto-complete is the main core of this conversation. I'd rather have Yes, I'm aware uh, of that. It's not specific to you. It's like, this is just Win the game! Wait, hold on. Win. <laughs> how, much do you, how much do you think uh, it's worth? I might play you a hand of poker for it. Oh. There you go. Break the bone! Ah! And anyway. what Colin said. Um, for those of you who wish to purchase the translator of Colin, it's our highest level. <laughs> I, was, I was doing a, I, I was saying break the goes down in a in a sort of horrible harpy like way, uh, 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 <laughs> but in in in, in imitation of uh, the classic Chris Jericho theme tune. Yeah, sure. Jericho. Uh, I think that's good. Nico, you're back with us, right? Yes. Good. Nico. Yes. Yes. Nico. Yes. Aye, I'm back. Aye. Aye, it's me. I'm Nico. I'm back. I'm Zora, the Vesk captain. Yes, it is me! Um, we'll hear from Nico's lawyers. That's fine. Um, <laughs> right, anyway. Meanwhile, within the game, you all start to hear Screaming. everyone's thoughts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. As you just munch. Munchosaurus Rex meat. And I believe the thoughts were as such where Zora says, ain't half bad. Mind nods in improvement. Uh, <laughs> wonder how ship is. And then Zig's thoughts were finally a moment of rest. <laughs> food dancing. <laughs> and Nix's was this reminds me of sand jerky in the hovels of Akaton. I don't like sand. It's coarse and it gets every. No, wait, that's not what you're wrote. <laughs> uh, we should just have eaten the tree. <laughs> where'd we leave Ivan? Sorry, where'd we leave Ivan? He'd get through uh -huh. this quickly, even make something useful out of it. And then, like I said, these things aren't too bad. More meat than we needed, though. I think, weirdly, <laughs> this proves Lyco's the most normal one, despite <laughs> on paper being the weirdest one. <laughs> Oh. Also, I love that the captain and uh, it's like thinking typhus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It's I came so back to dense. typhus. You thinking yeah. typos is what we were saying. <laughs> like both Zig and Zora thinking typos. To be fair, right? Space common isn't their first language, so yeah. yeah. Uh, I assume. Um, Fianoli. 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 The time has come. <laughs> I like to think that uh, probably Zora is very laconic. I'm, I'm very sure he's very laconic and thought. Mm. For those that don't know what laconic means, subscribe to our highest level Patreon. Less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you get some history lessons about the Spartans and stuff. Not so <laughs> much. Oh dear. Um, laconic um, is what the Spartans spoke, and it's basically the spoken one liners. Yeah. Like they spoke very. Straightforward, not yeah, really. Yeah, lake on their mythical. No peeking okay. around the bush. Really. Semi mythical. But next. Yeah. Out loud, but not in the uh, version of Lysistrata that I read, the translation. Uh, so to render the uh, the Spartan speech, because uh, there's, there's a Spartan prominent character in it, uh, the re 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 her accent as presented in the translation was like done in phonetic Scots. Mm. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> uh, quite funny. Anyway. Essentially, any Clint Eastwood film is like a modern-day variant of laconic speech. Yeah, it's not quite monosyllabic, but it's short, it's to the point, it's um, not not purple by any means. It, it, it tends to... It's, it's how people think Hemingway wrote, but not how Hemingway actually wrote. Yeah, that makes sense. I get what you mean, yeah. Um, they kind of almost assumed... Nonsense. As far as the game goes, I think I would spit out the unpleasant this that's now unpleasant on account of the brain thinking going to other people. I would say that the meat probably isn't so much that it's unpleasant. There is a no. I, I, I would say the meat is relatively what's the word salty. I guess it's salty and hmm. also dry, and there is like a really dry. Dusty spice, kind of taste off of it. 
Okay. Honestly, he probably likes it. Um, I just think the situation would be upsetting to him. Yeah, it probably is a bit jarring, if nothing else, right? Um, because that's not normal. <laughs> no. And no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I spit out the 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 meat I am currently consuming, and uh, you know, thinking to myself at the time. Essentially, what the fuck? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, everybody else hears that, obviously. You hear like, oh, think, what the fuck? And uh, probably hearing it as I say it, is that still happening? <laughs> I'll do it, sorry, if because it is speech, I will do it in his accent again. Is uh, that still happening? Hmm. Uh. I look at the queen pointedly. <laughs> she's just eating away. Um, quite the thing. She's like, she did that kind of shrug as she looked at everybody. And then, you know, knife and fork working away on it. We haven't heard anything from her. Not a single thought. Actually, I probably, stay quiet. I probably think we haven't heard anything from her. Like <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Zig would like to tech magic to see if it's coming from the queen or from the food. Uh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> ah. Bloop. Bloop. So many bloops. Bloop. Uh, yeah, you don't, don't see any magic. Deck brain food. At all. Oh heck. I mean, you have a bit of magic glow about you, I guess. Zora probably has a bit of a magic glow. I suppose Nyx probably has a bit of a magic glow. I suppose yeah, Lyco like, probably has a bit of a magic glow. Out of the, out of the usual. Green. <laughs> and I think, I mean, she probably has a very large magical glow, but... Nothing seems to have like be weaving its way across the table or anything, if that makes sense. I okay. feel like cool, cool. we would probably all know that he's done that. Do you know, like, describe what it looks like when you detect magic? Do you oh, he, uh, every magic time detection! He, he <laughs> magic detection activate! <laughs> ah! Well, um, my thinking was, like, regardless of the action, we would know that you intended to do it, and then we would know that you were yeah, like, I suppose, ah, yeah, if nothing. You'd, if you'd thought about it. Yeah, 100%. Oh, well, I, I thought about it, so I guess, yeah, everyone would know. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. See? Now you're thinking with portals. Ah, that makes sense. Um, but for those visual people at home, um, maybe it would just be... Are there any? always closest as... I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm a visual person and I'm at home, so... Okay. Um, he just put his hands on the table, close his eyes, take a breath and go... Hmm. Eh. That was me exhaling, not just going, Bleh. Yeah, Understandable. Uh, um, yeah. Sort of just looking around the table, thinking, what the hell is going on? <laughs> mm. And then, yeah, does MD either psychically or verbally respond? <coughs> I don't know what I'm really responding to. What is it magically detecting? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. No, I will carry on eating, probably quite barbarically. Uh, I mean, Lyco was mind speaking that you can hear, though. Okay. Seems yeah, I was saying. Next five is just repeatedly. What the fuck is going thinking, on? Think nothing. So you just hear, like, think is nothing. Is that coming think out nothing, as think nothing, think nothing, think nothing, think yeah. nothing? Think nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Um, um and... <clears throat> is the sound like audible as in we can hear it through our ears or it's all being transmitted to our brains? It's hard to tell. Zig puts his fingers in his ears. Yep, you can still hear it fine. Okay, cool. What were were you thinking it was like due to the 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 auditory 
powers or uh, uh, the the sonic flesh or whatever these creatures have. Was that? No, I, I'm I don't just ge genuinely just curious. Is like that's that's what okay. I would do. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, um, Lyco is is still very much puzzled and on guard, thinking suspicious thoughts of. What's causing this? Why isn't she thinking anything? Isn't she thinking anything? How can she not be thinking anything? So she must be thinking something, so why can't we hear her? I say out loud, um... So what do you think, the Queen? <laughs> and then... Because obviously I've just heard, um... Yeah. Colin say all the... Um, um, yeah, think all that. Michael say think all that. I, I, when I'm thinking it, I will just... And not saying it aloud, I will just do my voice. Uh, and I'll yeah. like it up when he's actually saying so. And then... Um, I think that... She uh, stops with her elven knife and fork. And she uh, sets them on the plate, crossed over. And then she clasps cool. her hands and she, uh, she looks at you, Zig. And she says... I've had better meals, but this one isn't terribly prepared. And she just kind of smiles at you. Well, I am glad. As am I. And then, I think, can you hear me? <laughs> she just stares at you, smiling. Guys, in thought. <laughs> Not Captain. thinking. Not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I would roll my eyes. Outside voices, please. <laughs> you scream so loud. <laughs> you hear the eyes, uh, mental thoughts, back. so much. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I suppose thinking and saying. Uh... What? Sorry, no, hold on. Like, I felt like she sort of reacted a bit at the end of the last session. Am I, am I misremembering? No. She shrugged and no. ate, kept continuing. You looked at her, I believe. Like, and she just looked at you, and then she kind of just shrugged and kept eating. It definitely felt like a reaction, right? Now, think of it this way, right? See if you were looking at it from a non telepathic perspective. <laughs> just such a great sentence to be able to say. Uh, you looked at her after biting into some strange ass meat that you've just killed and cooked okay. yourself. Then you looked at her and she shrugged and kept eating. Yeah, That's actually no, not that see, weird. I suppose when you put it that way, yeah, there is a, a there's there's an alternative context that uh, you know what? I think I'm right to, to, to take the one that I did because Lyco would have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suspicious. So, <laughs> We can yeah. go on together. <laughs> um, so I suppose it's the telepathy. <laughs> if no one else is going to verbalise it like it will, right? Uh we seem to be um, hearing each other's thoughts. He says, continuing to look suspiciously around the table. Not thinking, not thinking, not thinking. Are you oh, addressing anyone was, with that, or just in general? In in general, but sort of somewhat looking towards her. But, you know, looking around at everyone, but obviously leaning a bit more towards the Queen, as if to say, you know, is this a situation that you're aware of? Can you understand why this is happening? Is it normal when you eat these things <laughs> that you can hear people eating them? Thoughts like, is it everyone who can eat these eat these simultaneously hears each other, but we don't hear you? Blah blah blah. The, the question sort of implied, I think. Yeah, um, she's just smiling at Zig because you kind of you're not addressing her specifically. So as you kind of generalize that to the table, she'll just be smiling at Zig. Oh, and here's me hmm. thinking that everybody picked up telepathic abilities recently. <laughs> I think to myself, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? No, not that. Her, her reaction or lack thereof. Hmm. 
I think Vig's getting kind of absorbed by the queen looking at him. Just. Yep. And that's it. He's gone. Yep. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Bye, Zig. <laughs> Goodbye, Zig. Oh, you could play in a Sharu next. God, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Son of the Radiant Supreme. <laughs> you could play one of those things that's a ball. Oh, the the things from... Ball Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are OP it's as fine. fuck. It's fine, I'll just, I'll just play the assembly use. It's all good. <laughs> Ivan. <laughs> I prefer his character it. sheet's already done. Ivan so. E. Assembly use. Um. <laughs> that's so good. Bloom. I love it. Bloop. I've got to save Ivan, by the way. Just get out such an easy character, you know, just a... I wobble. I'll have you know, mm. Ivan has very complex emotions. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be quite a hard character to play I think band. to myself, uh, what a wonderful world. Uh, no, I think <laughs> to myself, um, I, I want to check something out, and then I say to the, the, the Queen, uh, excuse me a moment, I uh, have to go in something. <laughs> and make, I think that breaks her, like, her staring at Zig, and she turns to you, and she says, Is there anything the matter? And you've given her your name, right? You've given her Lyco. Yes, right? Lyco. As it were. Lyco, um, I give her, yeah. And uh, she says, Is there anything the matter, Lyco? That's the question. He smiles somewhat She looks awkwardly. a bit confused, like she doesn't get it. Like, maybe the subtlety of your uh, statement. It's lost in her elven ears. Yeah. Too slippery, you see. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I sort of rise. Yeah. No, she's discreet from the chair. Uh, and then the thumping of SK. Sort of wander off. And really, I'm just sort of going out to the sort of lip of the entrance just to get a bit of distance. Yeah. And just sort of, as I walk, and it definitely thinking... like it definitely does like the noise of everybody else, right? Because you obviously hear Nick's five saying, "Not thinking, not thinking, not thinking," and can't sleep, can't leave me, can't sleep, can't leave me, <laughs> <laughs> can't sleep, can't leave me. Um, and yeah, like it, it it does die down, like turning the volume down. Yeah. Yeah, and sort of as I go to clue them them into this, I'll constantly be thinking, uh, sort of. You know, just inane observations like that's an interesting pattern in the stones, mm -hmm. um, or oh, some lovely moss over here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just th and things a like constant thought stream, essentially. Yeah. So that it does like slowly fade out, and yeah, anyone paying attention to like the mind speak would be aware that Lyco gets quieter the further away he is. But then it's hard to tell if he's speaking or if he's mind. Speaking, so obviously Zig's yeah. testing of the putting his fingers in his ears would clue him into that. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Oh, balls. Yes. I used up all my tin foil. <laughs> what are you going to keep leftovers? Uh, I was going. I was going. I was going to line my hard hat with um, with tin foil. See if that helped. <laughs> That tinfoil has been put to good use, I'm afraid. Yeah. Did you feed the last of it to the ooze? I think so. That's uh, how I got the hard hat, I think. Yeah, I think so. Well, maybe if you give the hard hat back. <laughs> so, quickly just nip all the way back to Versus. Find yeah. Ivan. Um, it honestly seems perfectly reasonable to me. I think so. I mean, Versus I mean, is only a planet away. And what is a planet? I mean, there's a definition if you want to, but yeah. Yes, it's it's a specific movement pattern of body of uh, matter orbiting a star. And as we know, energy matters. Uh huh. We discussed it, <laughs> and I so, think we all agreed. So, Lyco walks away down a corridor. Um, you get maybe about fifty or so. Maybe even it's longer. That maybe it's like more like a hundred feet before you can't hear them. Okay. Like, give or take. I know that every single person in D and D and Starfinder and Pathfinder knows exactly how many feet they've walked. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Like, give or take, like eighty feet, hundred feet. Yeah. Far enough down the corridor uh, that 
it would be difficult to hear them speak. Never mind, hear them think. Yeah. So I think uh, knowing that. I would probably return, but I'd, I'd wait a moment, you know, just to make sure I hadn't just missed it because it was quiet. Mm-hmm. Make sure that I'm actually actively listening. Because I don't really understand the mechanisms of how I'm hearing this. Yeah. Um, and when I am satisfied that, yeah, this is the point at which I can no longer hear them, I'll return sort of thinking over to myself, you know, uh, about a hundred yards or whatever, not yards, meters, was it? Yeah, no, it was. It was a uh, feet. Yards, feet, feet, feet. The other, the other. Feet, measure. yards, four yards. <laughs> forget what yards are. Like three feet. Um, oh, so they're, yeah, like yeah, meters. they're shit meters, aren't they? Um, oh, about, shit. about a hundred feet. <laughs> about a hundred feet. About a hundred feet. About a hundred feet. Please stop saying measurements. Hundred <laughs> feet. Hundred feet. He's been broke. It's like total recall. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Uh, just just thinking that over and over and um, just because I, I want to so, sort of see so I want to know like if they react to it or something like if if they think anything in response to that I can want to know at the, what, what point they're picking me up, see if it's the same is it my idea when I'm returning? Yeah, like you see when Mike goes away, what does everybody else do at the table? Prize Um... I'm I'm probably just eating like a slob. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I imagine you don't use cut or anything. You just like pick up bits. Nah, of Nah, it's totally my hands, yeah. man. Yeah, like. <laughs> I mean your hands have blades in them, so I mean, yeah, that's valid. Your claw, your clawed hands. Um, yeah, Nix, you still just mantering it up? Yeah, I imagine Nix Five has stopped eating at this stage. Um, mm-hmm. He's not comfortable with what's going on, but he's. I think he's letting other people respond yeah. and observing them okay. um, while trying to, you know, not influence anything as much as possible. Yeah. As so, in, yeah. yeah. Not Observe letting the experiment, don't become the experiment. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, um, you know, letting other people mess and have their thoughts heard. He's offering no information up. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's valid. I, what about Zig? Zig up to? I think Zig would kind of look around, look under the table, and see if there's like a thing kicking around that's doing it, because it's kind of weirding him out. Uh, that there's a sort of telepathic thing happening that isn't doesn't seem to be magic related that he can detect, um, which is completely new. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to give me a, a perception check? Then? Yar. What up? Yeah. Um, like you maybe like look under the table and stuff, and no, there's like nothing. There's just that pile of stuff you pushed off the table. Um, S gates at the other side of the table from you, I guess. Um, and then as you can like look back up, the queen just says to you, "Is there something the matter, Zig? You seem upset." Um, I'm just my my. I'm just um uh, distracted. She kind of just tilts her head and looks at you. My my mind's my mind's somewhere else. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I need you to take like an awkward bite of his um, uh, his his dinner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she says, "Unfortunately, I don't have anything as an alternative to offer you in the way of sustenance." My young rat friend. Oh, it's, it's 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 fine. That's quite all right. Um, this is this isn't bad. I've had worse. <laughs> I've had worse. What are you thinking that everybody else can hear right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god, please stop! Just stop! What's <laughs> going on? Ah, no, stop it! <laughs> ah, she's still talking. Why is she still talking? Ah. Uh, Say something! Ah! Food! Ah! And then, like, obviously that happens and we just get this look of panic and probably just fires in the reflection of Zig's eyes as he stares blankly at her with the plate of meat. And she says, If you wish to be excused, you are no longer bound to my table. No, no, the table's good. Table's, table's, fit dinner, food, it's, it's all good. <laughs> I kind of sit down and just look straight ahead. And then she kind of looks up and she kind of like 
tries to get Zora's attention. Um, and she just slams the table with her, her palm. Oh. Do you want something? <laughs> yes, your attention. Good. And she just <laughs> grins with her sharp teeth. I would grin back and I would probably like, lick my fingers. Like, one. Separately. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says now that you have eight in my hall can I expect ongoing allegiance she leaves that kind of hanging we usually ask for a retainer she laughs. Um, she just laughs, kind of like out loud, um, kind of like, I guess genuinely. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, she says, "And I used to have retainers," and then she can like gestures around to the empty room. I think that next five starts pulling up the the usual draft contract on his computer. <laughs> Passes it across to the captain. I would peruse. <laughs> Honestly, what are you thinking? I'd like you to share both what you physically say and also what you say mentally think during this particular part of the game. <laughs> and yeah, forever so more. No. <laughs> I'd probably be thinking at the time, I mean, we could probably use all the help that we can get. But I'm pr you could probably like, hear my. My, the doubts and my thoughts, if you know what I mean. Like, as in, like, I still don't know this woman. Mm -hmm. Like, she's done nothing to harm us yet, but, I mean, yeah. Wow. Can I trust them? Wow. <laughs> do you think that, though? Is that something that's, that rattles um, your head? Yeah, I mm -hmm. do. Because Drow are, like, not exactly the best reputable peoples of this. I love how you're judging her by like the behaviours of Drow like possibly hundreds or thousands of years after her time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. I mean, it's like calling a caveman dumb. <laughs> I mean I, I can't imagine the vest changed that much. <laughs> yeah. So he's probably gone through like personal experience mm -hmm. or personal history. <laughs> what was that, Zig? Um I think I think um, as she said that, I think he would have that that sort of thoughts of every encounter they had with the old drought queen. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, in sort of in sort of um, conjunction with every time she's kind of looked at Zig almost fondly and smiling, mm -hmm. and having just the th if <clears throat> confused had a noise, that's what his brain would be. Yeah, and I think. Like as you kind of like slowly like let your mind drift to all the, the slightly less than positive uh, experiences Zig had with the Drow Queen. I mean, probably a lot of the graduation day stuff has come up. Yeah. Quite frankly, um, I mean, she was pretty badass in that. She did uh, hold her own for a good bit, and she managed to leave with the egg that you apparently now have. Um, mm. It's almost this weird mirror darkly kind of thing you got going on just now, but she, um, this queen, I. Uh, she kind of just clears her throat and then laughs again kind of to herself as if something has just came to her but she doesn't like say anything she just kind of laughs and kind of like puts her hand on her chest to kind of like catch oh. herself did I say something funny? I don't think I said anything <laughs> <laughs> <And> she, uh, <laughs> she like kind of looks a bit embarrassed and a uh, like slightly darker purple on her cheeks, and uh, she just smiles at the table, and then she uh, looks up at like probably past everybody towards Zora, who I imagine's at the end of the table for some reason, and uh, Wait, it's capped. she smiles and says, "The uh, the dishes won't clear themselves, and here I am sat here expecting servants to attend them." And she just laughs a bit more, and she's like, "You could say I'm a little out of touch." And then she just like yep. runs her finger across the table, and obviously, like probably a bit of dust or whatever is on it, and just flitters it away 
other hand. I can imagine a couple hundred years would do that to you. <clears throat> she smiles and she goes, at least. At least. <laughs> and then she, uh, she says, as for arrangement, I... And she kind of like looks around to the room again. She goes, I seem to be alone. At least for now. If my people, my subjects, still live to today, even their descendants must know I have returned. However, my sister will have ingrained herself in their expectations and she just smiles at that word I hope to recover them and she just kind of holds there she kind of looks at everybody waiting for her I expect I would have returned by now you can well. be walking back in and during that conversation yeah. maybe you start to hear them talking as you get closer um, and then also maybe you mentally hear them talking um, if and then we're thinking superly her racist drow thoughts from Zora first. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, like so she says that Racist is a strong word. <laughs> and you can hear the uh, you can have heard that whole thing if you wanted, like all but time you're back. Like that could have been cool. in your shot as you kinda of head into the corridor. Um and then obviously if nobody says anything, she uh, she says I obviously have a lot to do and I seem to have a palace I need to rebuild and restock and restaff. This will keep me somewhat busy. And you can see her kind of just looking at her scythe. And then she says, um, I intend to be an active queen in this age. That would make a fast. Again, would it? She grins again. I think to myself, uh, <laughs> that's ominous. <laughs> and then, I think at that point, like she just looks at you, Michael, as you like walk back into the room. Mm. And then she uh, states, "If our interactions could continue, this would please me. You all seem so uniquely." Specific. Just stares at all of you like individually. It's an odd choice of words. Yeah, and she's kind of like it's slowly like playing with the. She's yeah. like spinning the scythe, like in her hand now. Mm. Well, mm. they are probably considered a unique group for this day and age. She narrows her eyes when you say this day and age. <sighs> and she just says, I wouldn't know. Smiling. Well, let's just say it's not often you would see a uh, uh, Yoxian, an android, and uh Oh my god, what's the name of the actual rat people? It's okay. Uh, it's it's okay. okay. It's okay in a vesk, sitting down, having a meal together. And, well... A drow queen. I uh, mentally and physically uh -huh. clear my throat a little. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, not uh, Eoxian, Captain. Uh, you can tell from the head. Oh? Theirs are large. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry for insulting the size of your head. <laughs> Is I don't continue. Is, like, I'm not going to specifically she, mention no, where I am. She leans in and she says, Is cranial circumference an important factor in the solar system's hierarchy? She, you see her, like, she just like, slightly taps like her temples. <laughs> well, I mean, partly for this man it is. <laughs> and I would chuckle. It's, uh, it's a very uh, reliable way to discern uh, human from Eoxian. There are other differences, but it's uh, the most immediately visible. 
She kind of just narrows her eyes. And she goes, I feel like when he says that, though, no, like, I mean, you can still probably hear my thoughts, and I'd probably be thinking, this just goes to show how little I know about Lyco. <laughs> Is there like an instinctual response Lyco thinks to that? Because that'd be brilliant if there was. Um, that's it. I, I don't know. Because obviously, if, uh, if the captain's mentally thinking, God, I don't actually know anything about Lyco, or there's so much I still need to to know about like or there's so much I don't know about like whatever the phrase would be like would like have a you don't even know that half of it you know like uh, that type I, I, of response. I actually think uh, I think um, I I don't know if he would I think I think it's difficult because I don't know how much ability he would have to even restrain himself from thinking yeah. here because it's the whole thing. Is like if you try not to think something, you think it. You've already thought not about thinking it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I, 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 so I don't. Is this something I could roll to see if that works, or is this? Yeah, just sure. Like, um, what about just an intelligence check? Sure. My end is quite mediocre. Um, let me just write that. Four yeah, nineteen to not think. And if you give me a second, I'll loud thoughts. I'll see if I can get us some kind thoughts. of a gauge for this because <laughs> what, what even are we rolling? And um, let's see. Let me check the difficulties, and we'll see what this would be. Because I would say this would be tough, right? It would definitely be a tough thing to do. Yeah. Considering this is a new experience. Um, oh, okay, let's have a look. What are we on? So, we've got easy, challenging, and difficult. Uh, I'd say it's challenging, right? Uh, it's 15 plus one or half of one or half times the party level. So, what's the party level at the moment? Eight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, even if it was just one times that without going too complicated, the pass mark's 23. So, I'd say, no, I don't think you quite catch it. Maybe, maybe as soon as you think it, you immediately think, shouldn't have thought that, or whatever the Lyco equivalent of that would be. But you probably catch yourself um, thinking it, but you don't catch it enough to stop it, if that makes sense. So, I, I think what... I, I, hmm, see, here's the difficulty, because like, I don't know, what would he specifically verbalise it in his, his thoughts, or would you know, would the captain just know that he was internally cackling or something? Um, yeah, uh, like how it, would that work? It would just be the... Zora would say something akin to... You know, actually, I don't really know that much about Lyco, to be honest. Or whatever Lyco's... Uh, sorry, Zora's thoughts were. And Lyco's reply would be something akin to... You don't know the half of it. You know? Or... I don't even know half of about me. Or like, whatever, like, whatever yeah. the the automatic response would be. And then it would just be a case of when somebody can't doesn't have a filter verbally and they just say what they were thinking and they go, Oh, shouldn't have said that. It's the same. Yeah, like, so it, it, it would be more like a it would be like more like something specific and verbalized. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, uh, okay. Well, I'm trying sorry. Uh, try and think of the phrasing you probably probably would say something akin to that. Or um Uh, you know what? I mean, here you just go. Said, so here you go. Thing. In fact, uh, he, he thinks to himself, uh, not by accident, <laughs> hmm. and then um, chuckles aloud when he realizes that he thought it aloud. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like a, a hysterical laugh. It's more of a <laughs> um, sort of, you know, a, oh dear. Uh, like cats out of the bag type laugh. <laughs> uh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, yeah, there's just this kind of weird kind of vibe at the table, and uh, I I would agree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should catch up one day. I would kind of snuggle. <laughs> That's like then I'd probably think to myself, and he was me thinking I probably fought him during the war. <laughs> 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 The, uh, the queen it's, it's speaks just up. confusion. She, she and just, then, of course, you would think, oh, Eoxy. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And then she just clears her throat again. And she says, 
When would you like to depart for your destination? Preferably as soon as possible. Unless anyone else would like to stay here for any length of time, for reasons. I would prefer to stay here no longer than necessary, Captain. I would not. Um, I, I th think... Literally, I think... Um, yeah... Oh, let me th what exactly would I think? It would probably be something like... Um, you know, let, let, let's see if we can find anything of use here, right? Let, let, let's see if this is, if there's any more we can gain from being here before we, you know, I'm not saying we stay long, but maybe not jump at leaving until we know a little bit more, because it's not like we're going to be able to leave instantly anyway, but. Um. And she stands up and she says, not that you were invited to stay at my, and she kind of gestures, former palace, I guess, soon to be renewed palace. However, you are welcome to stay if you require respite for now. This invitation is limited, of course, at my own desires. She just stares straight at Zora for that. I don't know how to take that. What does that mean? What does, that mean? <laughs> what does Zora think? Uh, <laughs> I was going to make an our husband joke, but... <laughs> Just, you tell the group what Zora would be thinking. Um, I don't know. Like, as Lyco was speaking like that, I probably would be thinking, like, he probably is like sort of worried about Alice and Ivan and stuff. Uh... Mostly Alice. I mean, he does worry about Ivan, but <laughs> but he'd probably be pretty damn worried about Alice. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, how long were you in the vault for, right? Yeah. Um, mm. So probably, uh, you probably get worrying thoughts of Alice going through your heads. Um, and... Hmm. Try to think how I would want, what I would say. Um, well, I do agree that staying here might have its merits. Leaving an infantile android on one new ship, or booting a potentially hostile planet for any great length of time seems like a bad idea. I would probably, you'd probably get another thought of Alice going through my head. <laughs> Didn't you say <laughs> you're... What was that, sorry, next? said infantile seems harsh and then the queen says didn't Young. you say that the planet in which your ship your star vessel didn't you say that is the planet in which your people occupy mm. um like most people occupy it but well, in fact, I guess my humans do actually occupy it. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they do, but the Yorkians. Like and she just smirks at that. <laughs> no, the stewards. <laughs> um, so but the, also she turns and she goes, "You're a either. steward." And here I thought my castle was without staff. A former steward. And would you please clear the dishes? Shit. And she just kind of like chuckles at that, you know? It was a different kind of stewardship. I, we did discuss a little bit about it in previous episodes. And she so just she, says, she convenient. She's just, mostly she's just taking the piss, to be honest. That's the vibe <laughs> that you get, because, I mean, she finds it a very odd circumstance. She's out of time in an abandoned palace with nobody except you guys. That got her out. It's quite a harsh, it's quite right? a harsh situation, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, you guys are like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody has sat and went, yeah, can we not stay here? Can we get the fuck away, please, as quickly as possible? Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah. That's the situation she's in. Um, not for, not, not duty of hospitality, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, my people are currently occupying the planet, but at this moment, couldn't really consider them my people. 
this is the planet, three planets over. And she thinks to herself and goes, away from the sun. I'd be like, counting fingers in my head. Um, fourth? Fourth. Yes, we are on the second. Oh, Wait. so we're in Castroville at the moment? Yes. Three. Three planets away from here? Oh, two planets away from here. Yeah, Captain, but... Majesty, uh... uh not that I, uh... I'm doubting your 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 accuracy, but uh are you certain three? And then she uh, looks at next five and she kinda says Can you do your light show again? Very well. I don't know if next knows what she means, but she waits. Um I'm not entirely sure. I do know what she means. Display the planets? Yeah. yeah. Assuming but, uh, would he actually, yeah. I was going to say, well, she doesn't say anymore, she just waits. I'm assuming it's pulling out my computer pad and pulling up this solar system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a late yeah, show. So, She's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I pull up the pad. and Show off the planets? Show off. Yeah. Yep. And then she points and she goes, and then she names them all and obviously Drow. Um, and she talks about the Sun, Abalone, Castrovel, Galarian, Akaton, and Versus. And she goes, we're here. One, two, three. Do we know the name of Galarian? Is if you think you, have, know if you, think you should know it, you don't need to roll. If you want to roll, roll. I don't know. I, I think I, as, I as a know. former a former sort of um, steward, that you would have some clue of the history of the pack. Yeah, even just, just of Absalom sure. Station, right? Because that occupies yeah. the space that Galarian occupied. So, yeah. I don't think you have to roll for that, no. Um, probably, uh, like, Nick... Yeah, sorry, Nick doesn't probably have to roll either, realistically, unless you really no, want to. No, definitely. And then, uh, like, Zora probably does have to roll, really, but then you were a, a politician, so you, you could justifiably not need to, right? I'm going to actually go on a whim and say that he probably took no interest. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. So so if you want to roll a culture check, it's probably it's probably a 23 again, to be honest. Okay, I'll try a roll. Yeah. Um, okay. Just culture. DC 23. Boom. <laughs> oh, that's totally... That I meant to have a unit, it's, it's, it's a fine. good uh, CG movie though, Galarian's. Yeah. Based on a game. Oh, Galarian? Oh, that was a cool game, yeah. actually. I never played was the a game, TV series, it, actually? There was a, there was a movie, know. yeah. Not oh, a that's a, that one, and that confirms that I did not care about that <laughs> piece of history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's talking nonsense about this, this mystery planet. Uh, Zig, it's up to you. Um, I feel like Zig didn't pay attention in other planetary body classes. He only cared about the sun. The sun. Yeah, I figured that was true. Yeah. Um, um I'm not even going to bother rolling. Like, he's definitely not paid attention to. In, the intuitively, that. I feel like it would just be obvious to me that that Nick's five would know this. I've already mm -hmm. covered that. Yeah. I, Nick's five, yeah. Yeah. Mean yeah Lyco? I know. I know you said that, but I just mean Knight Lyco would yeah. realize it. And he would sort of look askance to him. Probably the thought that's gone through my head is I don't recall a planet called Galarian and I don't recall blowing up any planets in the solar system yet. <laughs> uh, I had thought that might be what you were referring to. Uh, Galarian isn't there. <laughs> I mean, if you say that out loud, she says... Yes, I believe he's mentioned something about... She does that thing where she pinches the bridge of her nose. The gap. Yes. Yes. And this is where you lost, Galarian. Not us personally, but yes. She laughs because she realises what she said. <laughs> and she's like, Forgive me, I'm translating in very old dialect. Apparently. And then she just chuckles to herself. 
Well, this is. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's not that we had any trouble believing that you were. <laughs> that you had uh, lived in the time before the gap, but it's it's a different thing to see it realized in something like that. Yes. Uh, I wonder what would happen if I opened a gate to Galarian. And you see her starting to tap like a, a finger against her lips. Can well... You? Part of it remains, in a sense. She just looks at you. Oh. oh I've forgotten the name of the thing again. The stone. The star stone? Yes, the, the star stone. We can't um, be oh, yeah, shit. Sure. I have the. Uh, I, put, I probably still got it on me because. Yeah, the star I think stone I compass. I, 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 I draw the star stone compass for the first fucking time. <laughs> and. Uh, oh. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, this thing, I suppose it probably is like a fairly standard compass, but a bit more yeah. runic looking. Yeah. Um, flip it open, and I say, this should direct us to the last known artifact of the world, the Star Stone, which was the center of Absalom, and just look at it, you know, and it's, I'm holding it quite openly in view so she can see it, everyone can see it. Yeah, and she, uh, she kind of like crosses the table essentially. She like walks around it, um, and she says, "May Ow. I?" May I? And she like puts her. I, hand I offer it to her freely. <laughs> you would give this to me freely. <laughs> if she is an elf queen. Uh -huh. um, and then she obviously goes radioactive and then starts spouting, you know, Tolkien. At you. <laughs> really and then, uh, Melts down. Uh, Freeze fire like Godzilla. Yeah, flies away like Mothra. It's all standard <laughs> queen stuff. Um, Kaka. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Mothra said. <laughs> Kaka. <laughs> Kaka Mothra? Yeah. Kaka. Uh, anyway. Kaka, motherfuckers. Uh, so, yeah. She. How, how would she react to this? She would look at it and she would say. If Galarian's gone, where does this point now? You keep mentioning this Absalom, the different Absalom to my Absalom. This would point to the, the star zone which had been housed in the station, Absalom station. It now points to... Where is it pointing? Just like for frame of reference. So she puts her hand up at that and she goes, The star stone survived. And just looks at you. It would certainly seem so, although I'm not sure what it survived. This gap you mentioned that seems to have claimed yes. the planet. Yeah. Uh, yes. And she looks over at Zora and also the rule of those with small heads. <laughs> I would totally <laughs> chuckle at that, to be honest. <laughs> she looks back. She, like, she's kind of like, she's kinda cradling this compass. And she gives it her back, and she says, "Have you ever followed the compass?" Uh, given you that I know, over, like, so here's a bit of info for Lyco. Obviously, it pointed towards Absalom Station, so probably yeah. a million times you've probably used it day to day basis when you were a steward yeah. and stuff, right? It's probably something that is so generic that so many people use it without really thinking about how it works, like magnets. Um, however. Obviously, <laughs> now is maybe that lightning bolt moment where you're like, because we spoke about it as players many times. Yeah. But like, I don't know how much of it's came up in character where you know Urgalas took yeah. the Star Stone. And maybe it just dawns on you now in, in Lyco's mind, which means maybe everybody hears it now. That. Yeah, this, like, I literally would just think Urgalas. Yeah, right? So. What does everybody else do in that moment when he thinks about the Starstone Compass and she says, have you tried following it? And then he thinks, oh, Urgalas. And maybe there's some imagery about the visuals Lyco got while he was on Absalom Station before he was jumped in. 
they're in black and white because to get the color versions you need to be our highest level patron. Yeah. It looks artier this way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what's of these reactions when Urgolas is like psychically uttered? I would probably no. chuckle myself and I says, Oh yeah. It would make <laughs> sense that it's with the Librian at the moment. <laughs> and the Let's queen not turns follow that. Yeah, and the Queen turns and goes, What do you mean? The this Urgalas that we spoke of. Wait, he... did you say that aloud? <laughs> yeah, sorry I said that aloud. Okay. This Urgalas, he recently attacked Absalom and She laughs and she goes, Yes, recently. Um much more recently. <laughs> and if she he... was summed up in a word it would be tense, right? <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know it was there for the last time. This would now point to wherever he's uh taken it. Isn't this the entity you wish to encounter again? Um, wish to is a strong statement. May I have would to not be is probably the... eager to face this if avoidable, um, but I suspect it won't be avoidable. Not keen. And if this is to be an entity unopposed. What then? It seems we would all be at risk. Even my precious crumbling castle. Let's just say there'll be probably a more permanent gap showing up. Well, it's less of a risk and more of a certainty. Really. She kind of looks at you and she just kind of like does that solemn nod of agreement. Um, it's maybe the most serious she's looked in the whole, like, dining scene, to be honest. Where she kind of agrees that this seems very finalistic. The threat of this or glass. The question is how we would hope to stop it, considering how... How it's acquitted itself against more dangerous foes than ourselves. He says euphemistically. Such as. Okay. And she looks confused as if she can. Roll sense motive is a better. Go for it, Lyco. Sense motive. I'm quite good at that. Do you want me Go to write a preamble? To nah, just, type it. Just, just push the Bhutan. Push the Bhutan. Right. Push, push the the, Bhutan. What you read from her is. She's shocked in a sense that you can tell she considers you capable as a group. Okay. Like to the point where she... And like maybe in your head as well, maybe this is where random latent cultural knowledge kicks up where she dined with you as equals. Yeah, that's true. She did take as, as, as guests at her table as she might visiting dignitaries or something. So, if anything, she's kind of treated you guys with, like, complete respect. She's even joked with you about you clearing away dishes for her, even though there was no expectation behind it. Like, you're getting the part now where she clearly considers you guys formidable, which probably means she considers herself formidable. And that's... If only she saw every combat would be like that. <laughs> I mean, she did see one. Right? Which is about 80% of the combats in our game. So, <laughs> I joke. Um, There's been lots. Go watch the videos, everyone. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean... I don't know that Lyco particularly wants to say it, but... Would you think it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, made, she made short work of the... Uh, usurper. <laughs> <laughs> he made short work. He? It? Does it have... I don't know. Yeah, Urgalas. Is, like, Urgalas, um, is, Urgalas is, is has always been considered yeah. Urgalas. If you, if you, there are male and female uh, bone sages, right? So there's yeah. male and female Eoxians, Thus, there would have been male and female Librians. And they do look pretty much as male and female humans differ. 
Yeah. I would say. They have the bets that you would associate with their sexes. Yeah. Yeah, so so I would obviously know and uh, think of it as a male. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just something like he did that short work. Yeah, usurper queen. <laughs> because, I mean, even the, the palace guards were a total walkover for us, right? Or not the palace guards, vault guards, was it? Or whatever? Uh, yeah, like you had the, um, like on her throne ship, right? There was a whole bunch of like... And she had her ninja. Drow personnel, and then she had her like royal guard. Like her kind of, you know, almost kind of space paladin man next to her. And he was a tough cookie from what I think you remember. Um, I'm sure you have exchanged some yeah. fire. And yeah, like Urgalas walked in, kind of paralysed everyone, right? And then liquidated them. Yeah. And, uh... You know somebody else that can do that? Zig. I, uh... I, I, you know what? I, I, I was not like I would say nothing, so I suppose... When we... Faced... Your... Uh... Self-appointed successor. You can say my sister if you wish. If uh, you prefer I be direct, then yeah, your sister and her guards and... It was a difficult situation for us. I don't know how well we would have fared. The odds were starker than we'd realized, but it did not seem difficult for him. The Elibrians were formidable with their advanced technologies well beyond other races, from what I recall, and also their sorceries. And she kind of like, there's almost a look of jealousy in that last bit. His, Not much has changed. <laughs> his power was... They live underwater though, so... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, great, great, great granddaughter. Oh. It's pretty fine. Um, yeah, but yeah, he, oh. he, he was uh, <laughs> difficult to even conceive of how to act against him when it seemed like they were powerless to do so. She just looks in deep thought. Deep thought looks back. Mm. Yeah, there's very kind of little from her, other than she just kind of looks like in deep touch, like holding her chin or something. Uh, does anybody else jump in with the thoughts that are floating around regarding Urgalas, the compass pointing towards potentially Urgalas or wherever Urgalas put the star stone? I mean, he, in, he is mostly mind, thinking like any ships that jump to the Star Stone that expected to get to absolute. Oh stadium, God, yeah. Will end because not every, the, the information is not going to travel instantly. Like, no, Especially when Absalom's gone, right? Yeah. Oof. Right. Are the information hubs gone? Hmm. I think the scale of the problem is starting to hit again a little bit. I think, like, yeah. with a bit of distance there, it, it, it's not that the shock was gone, but mm. it felt like there was a like almost like there felt like there'd been a degree of distance and safety, and like, and I think this is kind of like a, a reminder that 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 sort of illusionary that there's really um there there is no sort of getting away from this the entire packed world is threatened by this perhaps mm -hmm. everything you know is threatened by this yep. um that's yeah, a big bloody deal isn't very it? much he is, he is thinking like we are we are we are not prepared to fight we we you know literally are not up to the task mm -hmm. what about the uh the others what's like nick's pondering um I think Nix is. Hmm. Probably always thinking the technicalities of uh, storing the Star Stone. Uh, it's, um, it's not the sort of thing you can just 
stick somewhere and you know, expect it to be safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and nuclear, I don't know if, you know, if uh, Ogilas has consumed it or done something to it that we would still be able to detect it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess he's almost running through the, uh, I guess the pre-planning for if we were going to go after it. Of, yeah. I'm just trying to like run what, the logistics almost. Yeah, what conditions can we expect it to be under? Because um, he's got to have it in a position where if people do jump to it, there's no danger to it. Mm-hmm. And he's intending to keep it. Yeah. Okay. So he's uh, yeah, running the numbers. Yeah, and it's probably like, obviously for everybody else though, right? It's probably just being spammed by that gif of all the equations floating in there. Right? That is basically it, yeah. yeah. For everybody yeah. else having to like, process that. <laughs> I imagine there's a lot of back and forward of sticking stuff into his tactical computers and his, yeah. uh, his uh, exocortex, which Sounds is probably then shoving stuff back out to annoy everyone. Uh-huh. Sounds like anything it's... you want to ask the Queen out of interest in this moment? <sighs> not sure. I'm not sure. Um... Mm. I feel like her pre-gap knowledge is inevitably going to offer up something valuable, but this she doesn't know this entity. It's like... Yeah. She knows of the Alibrians, though, right? Yeah. I mean, well, she knows of sure. Alibrians, but Alibrians, like, to her, are kind of like how... You no, know, Egyptians painted aliens on their pyramid walls, apparently. Right. Right? Right. Like... Yeah. So they're almost legendary, like well, creatures way, of sorts. The, <laughs> like... the elves can travel between Galarian and Castravel through magical bullshit gates, right? So that's a thing because it's kind of like going back to the Fae, right? In a way, that's like Pathfinder levels of knowledge, where mm-hmm. Pathfinder was like, okay, cool, everything's fine in Galarian. Oh God, something bad's gonna happen to Galarian, right? All the elves, let's go back home to Castravel, comma, Valinor. Comma, let's use the Grey Havens and go home. Right, very loose parallels here, and um, and if you're going to sue me, Tolkien Enterprise is sue Pathfinder. Um, but I mean, the whole day of yeah. home thing has been done. So many yeah. other people, I think, were fine. <laughs> yeah, and for her, the like that's obviously like Magitech, if you want to use a word for it, right? Like it's magical devices and such, magical shit. However. The Librians were like travelling the stars in spaceships and do you know what I mean? Like they they were the ancients as it were, right? They okay. they were super advanced at the time. The problem is though they were super advanced and built a giant fucking gun to blow up a planet. They're idiots. Do you know what I mean? It's just because of their aggression. Yeah. But how much of that is known to people is probably very, very little. They just know that something happened to Eox that really wrecked it. And yeah. Obviously, if you spoke more to her, she'd probably talk about the planet that was in the diaspora, right? The twins, I believe, that was referred to. Um, and that's what the diaspora belt is now, because that's what the Yoxians hit with their gun. Um, so to her, that's that's a planet still, right? She doesn't know about the diaspora belt. Um, yeah. So that whole first arc of the story is all news to her, because yeah, you just went to the diaspora for the Baskerville research station in the middle of nowhere, which to her was the orbit path of a planet or uh, two planets, more accurately um, the twins so, yeah it's her knowledge is going to be so skewed, whether or not it's useful is really up to you guys, in your utilisation of her um, it's kind of like saying, here's a screwdriver go enjoy the medieval times right? Like, it's not that different a parallel, to be honest, because it's an object potentially useful out of time. So, yeah. It's really up to you guys what you consider the use of her to be, other than somebody kind of friendly for a change. I think, uh, I, I guess it, it isn't likely that she, she is going to have anything we could use practically here, but, but, Hear me out. You know what they did have in Galarian? What's that? Dragons! Fucking dragons. True, actually. She might actually be able to help us with her army. You're correct. Right. <laughs> mm. Um. So, 
wildly steering the conversation to a different matter, uh, sort of realizing this as we sort of... Because the thing about thought is it's a lot quicker than speech. Mm -hmm. um, so we can probably go through a lot without an awkward amount of time going on silently. As a brief uh, aside to that, somebody once told me it was a thought was quicker than light because you think about switching the light switch on before you do it. And I was just... I was left in complete confusion. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I was like, this is great, but also so wrong. <laughs> it's, uh, do you remember the bit in... Oh, I can't remember which one is. I also, if anybody came to listen to our game, by the way, I'm sorry, we're just going to talk about our game, okay? We are! Guys, and like, it's really it's good. good, I enjoy that! Yeah. Um, there's, uh, I think it's a Win the Rinse Win books where like, Pratchett talks about like everyone thinks light is the fastest thing in the universe, but it's actually dark. Dark. It's because it's wherever there. light goes, it finds dark's already yep. out there, yeah. I it's love so good. that. It's so good, yeah. Of course, actually, light is quicker than darkness. This is an interesting thing, but basically, um, darkness is the absence of light, right? So it takes time for light to dissipate from an area. Mm -hmm. So it takes longer for darkness to reassert itself than it does for light to erase darkness. So light is actually quicker if you're going to be a wanker that cares about that rather than a cool sentence. But you're a um, wanker, <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm going to be that wank and say that thought is the speed of light because uh -huh. like, technically light like, Electricity and all that, you know, sparking up the synapse, you know, like that's electricity like, doesn't move at the speed of light. Fuck yeah. it, don't speak to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that energy matters. Uh, energy oh God. possibly matters. <laughs> um, anyway, zooming all right. the way back into Castroval, right, cool. all the way into the jungle. Stuck by a thought. <laughs> Says allowed. faster than darkness. <laughs> yes. Um, Faster than a black dragon. Actually you fast. may uh, actually be able to assist us with a, a more manageable but still difficult threat. What do you know of uh, black dragons? And then she kind of um, is kind of like pulled from her her thoughts, and she says, "Trust me, this is relevant." <laughs> She just grins at you, and she says, Of course it's relevant, because what else would you need besides a world-ending entity from a <laughs> forgotten time, and a queen's knowledge from such a time? And she just kind of chuckles to herself, and kind of like gestures loosely to the, the air around her. And she says, Is there a specific question you have about black dragons that I could answer? Or do you wish me to recite my entire education? Uh, we were particularly concerned about how we might... Um... Kill it. Yeah, to put it... <laughs> <laughs> delicate. The particular black dragon that we mentioned that was involved in our confrontation with your sister, Hamani has become something of a lesser but perhaps more immediate threat. And you're saying my sister was involved with a black dragon? I, uh... I understand he attempted to uh, instigate some double dealing with, with the uh, drow establishment specifically. I mean, that that would be her. And it did not end amicably after he did ask for, you know, her head, as it were. She just laughs. Just really abruptly. A black dragon wanted my sister's head. Oh, she does make fabulous friends. Hmm. You'd probably be thinking about her getting drunk at this moment in time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> just had Manny downing her. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 That happened. And then, like, the Queen just, like, shudders at that point. She kind of shudders as if the entire conversation's weird. And then um, she says, I think you'll best follow me. And then she just walks out of the room. Follow? I look around in slight confusion, but follow. But sigh and then follow. Yeah. Uh, next. 
On we go. I'm on board. <laughs> it's just Eeyore oh, God. at the end of it. I was just thinking. <laughs> Or Marvin. Oh, right. oh. I guess Mar Marvin is, I guess, a more, a more accurate representation. Yeah. <laughs> but I do. Yeah. I don't know. I just like the Eeyore thing because then we get to pretend whoever else is. I think like Lyco's sure. Rabbit. Maybe. I, 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 I'm not. In, I'm not expert enough <laughs> in the ways of. Uh... No, Zig's Tiger. The silly. The yeah. poo. I don't know though. Like. Maybe Zig is rabbit. Zig's because... Tigger after after the show got cancelled and <laughs> <laughs> hit hit the streets. Uh, oh dear! I don't know. I just feel like maybe maybe Zig is more rabbit because of the worry, right? Rabbit was all about worry. Mm. He was Tigger turned turned rabbit. Yeah, I think Alice might be Piglet. <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, not crossing the oh, the streamers. Hear? And uh, yeah, so Crossing streams. She starts walking through like the broken palace and like the massive entrance hall type thing um, down the broken staircases, and like she's gonna just crawling kinda... and Miss Sen starts to play. Yeah, yeah. I was crawling. It's good. Sorry. And then <laughs> she uh, like glides over like broken parts of the staircase and stuff. She's very graceful. Um, and uh, it takes like a sharp left turn uh, through another kind of like mostly like decayed door, like she pushes like bits of it open and it like cracks away and half of it falls apart. And um she walks down and keeps going. Obviously like it's a non lit part. It seems to be heading like further down into the stone. Um it seems to be carved out of the stone again like all this is. But it's very intricately done. Um very art nouveau and not art deco so you know it's elven and not dwarven. Um yeah. and then a uh, yeah, like you're walking for a good twenty minutes. Like Zemdi. Leaf shapes rather than squares. Yeah. Zemdi, Can we like... still hear each other's thoughts? Are you thinking Athens? What I was literally about to to say. Oh yeah. Um. Hmm. Because <laughs> anything you think, you'll hear. Oh, okay. I think I I probably am thinking, but nothing nothing like a hugely consequential. More sort yeah. of running. Running back over the facts pertaining to to Hamani and of course to yeah, like going over the case files in a way. Like yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know to ask Kate Fowler and to. Um, I assume you just left the body in Edgar the Wesland. other room. Yeah, I was going to say I think Nick's I did pick up back up. <laughs> so I don't know if next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Nick's just gave her a little, you know, sorry look, and then left. Yeah, and um, yeah, anything you're thinking back. will be shared. Um, I'm th my, my, my <laughs> it's the uh, the peppy what's his name board the the food <laughs> no um in oh, always sunny oh I don't when I can't remember their names I know exactly I'm, what you mean I know the exact thing you mean I am um, you know you can convince that Pepe was it Sylvia or something like that this... doesn't exist. It's like these people do all exist. You've just not been delivering their mail. <laughs> um, it's that bored. I'm, I'm thinking, it's you know, but like that's that is Lyco's mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I think we've shared this gift many times. In fact, to, for Lyco, <laughs> this is just the Lyco gift. Um, but yeah, so you just head down. Um, as I said, it's probably another half an hour actually of walking and down like descending. Um, I think at some point I'll just comment to her how substantial a palace this is. And I think, um, the, as you say that, yeah, that's exactly what she says. She goes, the young rat is quite right. It was rather beautiful. And she kind of just runs her hand down the stonework as she walks down the kind of slightly curving staircase. And um, it goes down the... And there's definitely melancholy to her voice, right? Like, mm. definitely fruity dogs to her voice. And she... Uh, then gets like as I said, it seems to be getting warmer as you go further down as well. Um, where that cool air of like an abandoned tomb kind of starts to become a slightly more warmer, as if the heating is actually left on down here. Okay. And um, I think it proves. Yeah, and it definitely is a lot warmer. I think um, I think he visibly relaxes at that as well. Like, yeah, because you don't have that awkward tensing of your shoulders thing with the cold. Yeah. And um, you eventually kind of get to like a kind of plateau instead of it being steps, and she walks in through another door. Um, that she has to unlock, but it just seems to be her pushing it open and a mechanism being sounded mechanically. She pushes the door away and then shocks and he goes, It's not much further. 
she just says to the group, and then I'd say maybe another five minute solid walk, um, and you're led into a very open, kind of like, almost like a coliseum type pit where it's like staggered um, rows to the point where there's a big pit in the middle. Um, she claps her hand really loudly once and there's a massive like kind of echo of that and as the echo happens all of like the torches that would be lit light up very dramatic and it okay, shows you cool. the scale of the room and there's a massive dragon skeleton in the middle okay. of the pit and she says this is the last black dragon I remember and we take our break there <laughs> hey. A natural timing. So Ooh. we will be back at ten past nine, I guess. I'll see you all then. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Bye.